Welcome to Money Station in Conversation and today I'm joined by Ella and Lawrence and we've decided to talk about home ownership. So our question is, is buying a house easy and we just don't have our priorities right? I'd agree. I think where people get confused is buying a home and buying a house. Huh? Buying a home, so that's going to be somewhere that you want to reside for a period of time. Yep. You currently live in London, you want to buy property in London, giving your current salary or something, that might not be possible. However, I So, sorry, sorry. Are you saying it's easier to then buy an investment property over a home? Yeah. If you've got your priorities straight. 25% of 75K is a lot less than 5% of 500K. But then where are you living? If, if you have the money to buy an investment property, you, you must have already sorted out where you're living. Or would you suggest... Not necessarily, because so many more people are staying at home. So they're staying at home, stacking their money, et cetera, et cetera. But they're so caught up in this ideal of where they want to live that, of course, they're staying at home longer and longer and longer to achieve like this ambitious home where really and truly they could probably get onto the property ladder a lot quicker by either clubbing together with friends through shared ownership, Facts. but they don't want to have that conversation, mm -hmm. taking advantage of more schemes, mm -hmm. but or some people are in a position where parents can give their money, but they don't want to because mm -hmm. they like, you know, to be able to do it all on their own. Mm -hmm. But yeah, buying a property is not as hard as people think. The government is not against you in terms of, you know, the ratio of salary to deposit and X, Y and Z. Mm -hmm. House prices have dropped, mm -hmm. you know, stamp duty has been have, scrapped. Have they dropped? London. Not in London. Not but, in London. But house prices have increased, uh, especially due to COVID in places like Cornwall. Exactly. Or just on the outskirts because people can buy more for their money. Uh, gardens, garden, working maybe. from home, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. But if we look at the the stats, so generally speaking, you can correct me here because you work in finance, but when you're buying a home, generally um, the bank will loan you four times your salary. Yeah, about four, 4.5. 4.5 your salary. Yeah. And what's the average salary in the UK at the moment? Say about 30K. 30K. Okay, so salary versus what you need for a, a mortgage. In 1960, you were able to purchase a house with 4.4 times in what the bank would lend you. But in order for you now, in today's society, for you to buy a house, you would need, with ease, 8.4 times your salary to be able to buy a house. I mean, it's harder, isn't it, surely? So, uh, again, when I ask the question, is it easy to buy a house? We just don't have our priorities straight. It probably is a lot harder than then our parents' was. era, our grandparents' era. But, but I didn't then... think about what Ella said before, though, about getting an investment property and using that to get you on the ladder. Mm -hmm. yeah. That might actually be a smarter way to do it. And nobody really thinks about doing that. Because they're too busy considering a home rather than considering a property. I, I don't know, though, because... An investment property isn't what it used to be in terms of rental well. income. Yeah. Um, so it depends what you mean by an investment property. Do we mean investment property to like a, a house at auction to do up and then flip? Or do Absolutely we mean not. rental? No. Because we... <laughs> Cause I can't do that. But then yeah. re rental isn't the same, is, isn't what it used to be. It's not. And it's definitely, it's definitely not, you know, a straight road. Like someone can just wake up tomorrow and think, oh, I've got 20 grand in the bank. Let me go and buy a buy to let. Yeah, it's not that easy. It's definitely a numbers game. You've got to speak to other people who have got experience. But there are ways to leverage a buy to let, you know, so you've got a buy to let the mortgage is next to nothing. So then you are in a position to recoup profit off the property. And that's depending on where you buy in the definitely UK. Definitely depending on where you buy. So definitely in terms of, like I said, speaking to someone with experience and doing a bit of research, but 25% of a 65k property 
or like I said, 5% of a 500k property, the numbers, mm -hmm. they, they, they already show which is more favourable. Mm -hmm. Then being able to remortgage mm -hmm. on a buy-to-let to release some equity mm -hmm. that may, all the, may already be potentially there or you've saved the rental income that you've been receiving is going to put you in a better position because you're already on the property ladder mm -hmm. than just staying at home with mum and dad, saving and saving and saving and saving because you've got this ideal two-bedroom flat Home. with a balcony in Islington. Oh, God, that sounds go good. Yeah, it does, but it <laughs> might not be realistic. And it's unfortunate that it's not realistic. I'm not denying that. Yeah. But I just think that there are other avenues. And definitely shared ownership with people that you know or friends or even companies that you can go into business with and do shared ownership where you can actually continue to then save towards buying out the other percentage these are options but i just don't people think i don't think people are talking about them enough so let's i'm a firm believer in looking at the things that we can do mm -hmm. so um we often will say the government ha hasn't built enough houses um, I was gonna say that. I was, yeah. which is true mm -hmm. they haven't built enough houses and um maybe our salaries are not increasing enough or yeah. we're allowing people from abroad to buy up UK property, which is pushing the price point up. But those are things that are out of our control for now. So sure. the things within our control, um, historically, couples used to buy together more. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not trying to say get with someone so you can go and buy a yard. <laughs> But I think there is something to be said for we are trying to do things single handedly alone a lot more now. And for me, uh, on one hand, I feel like go and get your own stuff before mm. you meet your partner or even with your partner, try and get your own. But then on the flip side, I think, well, why not? Even if the, the relationship breaks down, there's nothing to stop people. And, and as you said, friends, whether that's um, a friend, uh, a best friend, a cousin, an uh, uncle, a partner, you can put things in place mm -hmm. as a contract to say if anything goes, and this, you don't have to be married to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to take 50% depending on the, the value of the property that goes up, so on and so forth. There's nothing to stop people from doing that. So that's one thing. Another thing could be we're massive consumers now, more mm -hmm. than ever, even within my, my life. Um, I was so content having, like my go-tos to go out was my Air Max 90s, my dark and lovely gel and lip gloss. But now from a young age, it's like teenagers want the GHDs, they want, um, they want the latest clothes, they want Max. trainers that are Even not just... Cars. Cars. Mm. cars. cars is a massive thing. Yeah. I remember like the, you were it if you had like a, a, a yeah. Peugeot 206, mm. a little Golf, little focus. a Polar, yeah. a Focus, mm. and you were good to go. And none of this stuff where um, it's bought brand new, you would look at, the, I'm sure I'm my Asian now, you'd look in loot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you'd look wherever, you'd even see it. People would put it in the in the windows and mm. like my car, two grand, and yep. that was it. Yep. So, but now it's like you, you need to get a German, you need, you to, need get to get a high purchase, brand new. And I think it's hard to do sometimes, but the best piece of advice that I would give anyone with regards to purchasing is you have to focus financially. And there's nothing wrong with telling yourself the next three years, I'm going to live basic. And if you have friends around you that is not accommodating that, that's trying to draw you out on the weekend, draw you to Selfridges, draw you on holiday, Ibiza, Dubai, where you know you're spending money, tell everyone it's not that for the next two to three years and you mm -hmm. will save so much money. But, but going back to what you were saying, shared ownership, help to buy... They're all okay schemes. And I, I really can't stress this enough. Please do your own research. We're not advising you to take up any of these schemes. Mm, mm. We're just simply discussing what the options are. Shared ownership for me, I used to um, calculate service charges and manage shared ownership. And I would say it, it's there's ups and downs for both of them. Uh, help to buy and shared ownership. Yeah. Shared ownership, to me personally, on, only makes sense if you go in at a high percentage of the property that you want to buy. So above 50%. Okay. Um, a lot of property development like companies, 
they suggest, oh, yeah, you own your own home, buy 25%. Mm -hmm. Mm. But the problem with buying 25% is that your rent on the percentage that you don't earn Mm, will be so high. And the aim of you um, buying via shared ownership should always be to staircase. Now, staircase basically means that you uh, eventually own... Accumulate more ownership. There you go. You accumulate um, more ownership. So every two to three years, try and buy 10 to 15%. Mm. And if you don't, the value of that property, you'll be outpriced of your own property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why, to me, it makes no sense to actually buy 25%. Because it will take a lot longer to obtain... And if you go in at 75%, the majority of housing associations actually don't charge you rent for the remaining part. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the problem with shared ownership is the service charges are crazy. And they keep going up. And they keep going up. And the, and the issue with um, help to buy for me is that you are... when they the equity loan? Okay. The equity loan. When they loan, when they loan you the money... Uh, for a portion of the property of the deposit of the deposit you are not paying back the amount that you initially uh, borrowed you're paying back what the property value is at that time Mm. later on Mm -hmm. so a a lot of people don't look into these things but if it gets you on the ladder and you've done your figures and just just go for it but always research everything and i think it's it's having a long term goal as well the problem is people want to buy now and suffer the consequences later so it's like oh i want i want to own property okay but why do you want to own property what's the long term goal yeah. here are you buying with a partner are you trying to set up a family home is it because of location why you need to buy property is it because rent genuinely doesn't make sense because you're paying someone else's mortgage yeah. rather than paying your own but if you've got a long term goal so like you were saying if you are going to go into shared ownership and accumulate more ownership as time goes on then shared ownership might actually make sense because mm. you can afford 50 today you can't afford 100 but you know that you can afford 75 in a couple of years yeah. and then move up to 100 but I don't think people, when going into property, have a long-term goal. Yeah. It's just they know that they want to own. Here's the other thing, though. Don't you feel like it's so much more complicated now than it was 10, 15 years ago? Because there are all these schemes and there are all these means. Like People would just buy a house. Like You earn this much, you've saved this much. Now I'm going to purchase this. Like, now, I don't I know. Think we didn't have shared age. ownership. It's just there to aid you, though. It's there. It's there to assist for those who cannot afford it and the thing is we always talk about houses are not affordable they are it's just where you decide to live yeah that's that's the if thing. you if you go London up to is not affordable sorry, for the average person nobody i'm not living in northern ireland i'm sorry i'm not okay but then if you move let's say to the midlands <laughs> what no i'm not living there either what that's you your choice no disrespect people that's your choice though no, but I also work in London. My life is in London. My people are in London. What's to stop so you from commuting? Your lifestyle should accommodate you wanting to buy a property in London. As in, what, what does that mean? Well, what, if, you, if you're saying that you're not willing to relocate, but you know you want to own property, not necessarily you per se, mm. but I'm saying for an individual who's grown up living in London, yeah. then you have a certain perspective of what London house prices or London flat prices are. Mm-hmm. You have a level of perspective of what the rent is. Your lifestyle should accommodate that. As in what you should be earning, that's what you should be striving towards. Whatever the option is, I know I want to rent X, Y and Z here in London or I know I want to buy X, Y and Z here in London. What I don't think is fair is when people have lived in London for a certain period of time, been raised, been brought up, etc, etc. And then when they hit 26, 30 or whatever it is, I've done no research, I've done no forward planning, no forward thinking, no financial preparation and then turn around and like... The system's against me. They don't want me to own my own home. I can't ever earn enough. But do, do you know what, as well? Going back to things in our control, there's this, and I know this is not um, viable for everyone, but where possible, whether it's your gran, your granddad, your mum, your dad, or aunt, try and live with family as long as possible. Absolutely. And the problem so, yeah. is we look down on people that do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, the the largest group of people to own property um, is the Indian community in the UK. Mm. 
and they stay at home. And again, I'm not saying this is available to everyone. The three generation thing, it came up in COVID because, you know, it was about death rates and stuff, but the three generation thing has been traditional in the Indian community. And that's how, like, of course you're going to build and they're not do you know what they're not they're not even ashamed of it no, uh, i'm no. even fact, at work i said to, to i said to, yeah i said to a guy and he was like over 29 i can't remember his exact age but i remember just knowing he was like around that age and i said to him how come you still live at home and he said well i haven't found a wife yet so why am i leaving and he had no shame that that and why should he and i think we've bought into i don't want to say this western ideal but we've bought into this less escape Mm. Mm. this this newfound sense of independence less escape then we spend 10 years paying rent and we've got nothing in the pot to buy our own house especially in london Uh, 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 especially in london um but what would be good now is if people can understand and learn from our achievements or our mistakes so let's start with you ella are you a homeowner i am and how many properties do you own uh one okay i own one i'm a second time round, so i had a flat sold it to then get the property that i've got now okay um, and when did you buy it uh as in the new place or the, the original your first place uh when i was 26 and um did you find that difficult to do did you use any schemes didn't use any schemes but i did have a bit of help from mum and dad, okay. which I know obviously isn't available to everyone. The only thing that I will say in contrast to that though is I come from a household who have always owned property. Okay. So it was always something I didn't know any different. Did Apart- your did your parents save up for you or did they draw out equity from one of their other properties? They sold so we had our fa- when I say family home as well, it was it was a two bedroom flat. It wasn't like you know, a six bedroom <laughs> house in <laughs> the Cotswolds or something. But yeah, where we were currently living, they wanted to get smaller, I wanted to move out, so we made a decision to sell. They gave me some of the money from that. I had been saving. The combination of the two allowed me to buy a one bedroom flat. And then obviously they bought where they bought and now live where they live. So And what area did you buy in? Uh, Selhurst. Um, so like Croydon. And um, um, when, how many years ago was that then? So that was about five years ago. And Croydon's still quite affordable. Yeah. Cro- versus Croydon's, the rest of yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny London. because where, where I moved to, it was still a London postcode. Oh, so, really? Yeah. So basically where it is. Like Norwood? Not, yeah. So it's not quite Croydon, but it was still a London postcode. And I was very much like, I still want a London postcode because I know obviously the properties within London are going to increase in yeah, value. Yeah. Whereas in Croydon, they're going to become more affordable. Is Westfield's ever going to get built, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But having said that, now I don't live in London at all. Where do you live now? Like now I live basically towards Purley. Oh, so you've bought further out? I've bought further out. For something bigger for your partner yeah, and your child? Yeah, much bigger. Yeah, like now it's like a three-bedroom, semi-detached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Go on, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but of course, circumstances changed. And I hope you don't mind me being too personal, but from when you bought the property, um, how much in value did your property go up? So how much equity could you release? Uh, not i'll be very or honest you, you sold not that much yeah i sold it and where i was at the time everyone was like don't sell it don't sell it and this is why as well do you why regret I say, selling it i don't regret selling it of course i would love to have a london flat yeah and that will definitely be like the next goal on yeah. the list to tick off but you have to do what's right for you yeah. if i had listened to everyone around me they would have been like okay it's a one bedroom okay, you and your partner and you're like, so what? You look can make do for a period of time. And it's like, that's all well and good. But my situation and your situation, you're, you're from an outside perspective. Yeah. So you, you have to do what's yeah. best for you. You have to do yeah. what's best for you. But I think people get influenced so much by the status. So the status at the time was, yeah, but Ellie, you own. Yeah. You own. Yeah. Keep hold of it. Keep hold of it. Why would you and sell? And I suppose six years, uh, how, how many years again? Sorry? Yeah, about so five, six. Five, six years is not a lot to really generate unless to you're generate. in a, unless you're buying in a, in a place where there is um, regeneration yeah, happening exactly. yeah, as yeah, you yeah. buy. Yeah. How the house, usually they say about 10 years is when you, you make a, 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 accumulate equity. Yeah, equity. Okay. But yeah, so I, I sold and I rented for six months. Well, I think it ended up being about eight months. But in those eight months, I worked my ass off. Yeah. And managed Did you get a second job? Up. Uh, yeah, so I had like two jobs at the time. And then in the job that I'm currently in now, yeah. basically that took and over what, the other job. Did you get a broker? Yeah. Okay, Absolutely. I would always, always advise 100%. to get a broker. Don't and think about doing it on My your own. experience, learn from my mistake. <laughs> when I first, and do you know what, I'm an idiot, because 
I'm self-employed. Mm. Well, I work under my own limited company and I still thought I could do it alone because I happen to work in property and I completely flopped. Mm. So I went and did everything that a broker is supposed to do. Mm. And um, obviously, like, I write some some of my expenses off. So things on the paper is not exactly my salary. Yep. And blah, blah, blah. Yep. E everyone that's self-employed knows yep. what I'm talking about. Cool. She doesn't mean this. HMRC, she doesn't. Uh, d d you know, <laughs> not, not too much, just things, you just know, the, the car. The necessary uh, expenses. There you go. To being self-employed. There you go. <laughs> and then um, when I thought, okay, I don't need a broker because, you know, a good broker is about £700. Yeah. Yeah. And then Lloyd said to me, oh, yeah, you, we can give you a mortgage of £80,000. I was like, £80,000? What am I going to get with £80,000? <laughs> so I had to go back to the drawing board and I had mm -hmm. to get a really good broker. And again, another mistake that I made was, and this is why you have to be so careful when it comes to your spending. So uh, a mistake I made was during the completion of buying my property, because uh, the lender had already given me the mortgage, I was literally a few weeks away from completion. I went and bought a car. Oh. I, I like your car though. Uh, I went and bought a car <laughs> because That's I nice. thought, you know, because no, I'll be honest. When I got ready to start saving for a property, I scaled down. Mm. I went from a Mercedes convertible to a smart car and people criticised me like, what are you doing in that? That's dead. OK, cool. I'm buying a house. Go away. So I scaled down. I, I didn't buy so much clothes. I didn't go on holidays. Like I literally for the last couple of years been on one holiday. Mm. So I just was so focused, I'm going to buy a house. So when everything was almost like signed, fine, why, why will they need to have a look at my details of buying a car? I thought, I need, I desperately need a car. My smart car's falling apart. I went and bought a car. Then I needed my mortgage varying, okay? <laughs> and as my... I'm crying inside for you. You know what's happening next, right? So then my broker said, I hope you haven't used any credit cards, taken out any um, credit. I hope you're spending no because finance. let me be clear to everyone about to buy a house. They go through your expenditure with a fine tooth comb. So if yeah. you are flying out to buy, if you are buying things, if you're buying drip, all the rest of it, the bank looks at those things, even down to your food shopping. And they will say you will not afford a mortgage. We cannot give you a mortgage. Even if you think you're earning a lot of money yeah. from your salary. And the problem is, is it's done by their calculations as well. I remember I sat down with a broker before mm -hmm. I was with the one um, previously. And this was, again, still just doing my research. I was like 24, had no intention of buying a house. But I was like, let me go and have a conversation. Let me see how this works. Yeah. And the guy was like, OK, so you earn this. How much do you spend on this and this and this and this? And I'm thinking, I know how much disposable income I've got. But he's literally going through the expenditure bit by bit by bit. And he's like, oh, and your student finance earned this. Oh, fantastic. So you've got... £150 disposable at the end of the month. What mortgage would you and like? People don't know this. Like even down to I was I was paying, I think, about £20 for insurance for a watch. Mm. And he said, can't you just pay that off in full? And I was like, there's like £800 left. He was like, pay off. Yeah. See? He was like, when I go to the bank, they look at it. And that was £28. So for ladies doing your nails and all the rest of it every two weeks, when you're looking to buy a house and you're going to go to a lender, all of that needs to scale down. That goes for men as well. If you're taking women on dates all the time, they're going to look at your expenditure if you want to buy a house. So going mm -hmm. back to my mistake, when they varied the mortgage, which basically just means changed it for certain ad administrative issues, they saw I took out a huge car for my business and it was under my own name mm. and they dropped the amount they were going to lend me by almost fifty thousand pounds yeah so because of the value of the finance exactly in so to the mortgage amount yeah there you go so before we wrap it's up it's a really nice car though but before we, before, you can't live in your car i wish i didn't buy the bloody thing i would rather 50 grand to go on my house do you know wait Lawrence, do you want to own yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Do you know, the one thing I will say, yeah, is like rent pushes us in this direction, but it is a status thing as well. I think people are in a hurry to own. Yeah. And I think they should, like, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of UK, US thing. Maybe it's more driven by US. Mm -hmm. But in Europe, the home ownership rate is, is less than 50% in mm -hmm. some places. 
and like it's a lot of financial pressure to uh, and it's not always the best investment to, mm. to own a home and I, I wonder if we put a tiny bit too much pressure to be on that ladder so early so what, like, do, what would you say is early though well, the average age now is 34. 34. Yeah. But I think that's a good age. I think that's I a think that's I think you age. can live your life in your 20s. For those who want to buy a house in your 20s, go for it. Yeah. But don't put so much pressure. I haven't bought a house and all the rest of it. Exactly. But I also think as well, you've got to remember when looking to buy a house, you can't leave it too long because you won't be given the, the extension of the, yeah, the 25 sure. year yeah. period, yeah. which everyone wants because then your repayments are a lot lower. Yep. The shorter your mortgage term, the higher, the higher your monthly payments. repayments. But I suppose, like, how many of us make enough money? The 8.4 figure you were talking about. Let's just say you're on an average salary and you're age 28. You're actually doing quite well. Mm -hmm. Like, how affordable is the, is the mortgage you're going to get anywhere near a commuter town? in like London but this is the thing i think and close. and b before we wrap up people don't realize like what you were saying yes it's nice to have like a, a london postcode but why is it nice have we just bought into no because you say and this is pretty cool you're, you're say gonna, you're say, going to you're go gonna to say to commute yeah yeah okay so and places it costs like two grand to do it from reading anyway no places like i don't know um essex and mm. they have straight trains within 20 minutes but how much wow. does that cost a it, year. It will still be more in affordable to, than buying in to London. To the property is a big difference. That, how over what time period? Because remember, we said, let's say it costs you four grand your season ticket. Yeah, mm -hmm. over ten years, that's forty grand. Mm -hmm. So, w w who's winning? The train. <laughs> I still think it makes more immediate sense to buy on the outskirts of London. Yeah, and I think you have to. I think and it's we're about working at home now. Yeah, and I think I mean, it's about it's where you place now. value. Like if you're like for me, I didn't buy an investment property. I bought a family home. We have no intentions of going anywhere. So it didn't matter what it costs. It's it doesn't matter what I'm going to spend on it over true. the years because I'm not necessarily looking to recoup value because the value I get is the happiness of me and my family in it every day. Yeah. Sure. However, sometimes it can, that's what, again why I say about the long term plan. If your goal is to own property, you have to ask yourself why. Yeah. Is it a status thing? Is it because I want this to be an investment? So in 20 years time, I've either got something to leave the kids yeah. or something that I can sell and recoup equity from, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Then, yeah, of course, do your numbers. If it's a case where I just want to own property, well, yeah, then you're probably not going to be able to own it in London. Yeah. And if owning the property stacks up against paying the seasonal ticket well then there's there's your answer so just to reiterate in terms of advice for buying a house i would say if you can stay at home mm. or at a, even i'd go as far as to say stay with a friend a family member uh, and pay nominal rent as much as possible then do so we judge each other so much for staying at home but why when you know that okay you moved out when you were 20 but now you're 30 34 and you're still renting own, don't own a home i stayed at home till i was 30 32 i've bought a house so stay at home as long as possible if it's a possibility i would say if you want to start buying a house and you know that your goal is to buy a property in the next three years scale back your spending and this is not about saving this is about what the lender looks at mm. down to your nails down to your trainers they look at everything and lastly i would say no, no, two two last points <laughs> get a really good broker even uh -huh. if you're not ready to buy what you said was spot on you went to go and see a broker way before you were ready to buy because yeah. you wanted to know what, what the it entails. Was. Yeah. Exactly, the process. Um, and I would say definitely do your homework around shared ownership, uh, right to buy, um, help to buy, because sometimes things are available to us and we just don't know. Mm -hmm. Or we don't, it seems so daunting, like I don't even know what shared ownership means. Mm -hmm. And this is for me, if anyone wants to know what shared ownership means or ways around it, just let me know, DM me and I'll be happy to give advice. And what about you, Lawrence, in terms of buying? What's your thoughts about buying a house? I think two things. One, don't be a dickhead with your money. And two, don't rush. Like, so you do have to have a level of discipline. A mortgage is the biggest commitment, your financial commitment you'll ever make. It's not easy. So you'll have to, you'll have to be prepared for that mm -hmm. over a course of years of saving, of being thrifty, of only spending what you need to spend. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if that variable mortgage jumps on you 
and you don't know how to be thrifty and you're right on the edge, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. So yeah, the, the... And repairs. People don't factor in. Okay, you've bought no. your house, but do you know that a new roof can cost up to 10 grand? Mm. Exactly. And then if it's a leasehold flat, you know, like the service charge, the ground rent. S oh. Sinking fund. Yep. So the first bit of advice was for me, because I'm not good with the savings and stuff. Okay. The second bit was for people that are in a hurry to buy because they feel like they've hit a personal life mm. milestone and they mm. feel like they're letting themselves down by not being on the property ladder yet. Mm -hmm. Well, like we all said, just check your finances uh, and do your homework and please, please do all your own research. Everything that we've said uh, in this episode is our own lived experiences and uh, like I said, please do go and do your own research. Um, thank you for listening. That was Money Station in Conversation. Please subscribe and our Instagram and our Twitter is Money Station underscore underscore. Thank you.